All right, guys, so after a few hours of looking around, I know exactly what happened, why I can't physically see anything wrong with the amplifier and why now it's playing well. So here's what happened, or here's my theory. I have found a lot of stray, small PCB, sorry, solder pieces all over the amp. Look at that, okay? These SMD components are extremely tiny, as small as my, the tip of my electrical tongs. So a little piece of solder like that is enough to short this and to cause chaos. I'm thinking this one right here may be responsible for it. So imagine this piece of solder was a little bit bigger than this. Right now it seems to be fused to the collector. This is an IGBT. It could take up hundreds of amps from the collector to the emitter. This gate here is basically the control signal that comes in from the main drivers that tell the chip how much current to allow from this collector to the output emitter. And basically that's how you create your AC signal. You have one side driving positive and then the other side driving negatives. You can see how they're backwards. The gate and the emitter are backwards. Very simple design, very robust. So now this particular piece of solder, if it was a little bit bigger than this and it fell here like it seems to have done, this side, basically due to the heat, got welded onto the collector. The other side would have caused a short circuit and allowed basically almost unlimited amperage to go from the collector to the emitter. And we see here there's a little divot which sort of supports the idea that there was a piece of metal there at one point in time that may have literally just fried because of the amount of current going through it. So that would have caused a DC short circuit from the collector to the emitter, sort of overriding the AC signal the amplifier was putting out. And that would have sent a ton of amperage out to the speaker coils for a few milliseconds and would have put the amp in protect because the amp would basically detect that it's not following the, the AC signal, the PWM signal, but we have a short. So I'm thinking this right here, this stray piece of solder that was big, short-circuited, half of it fried off, the other half got welded here. So what I'm going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to reinforce these traces with some pure copper wires like we have here, really thick, sturdy copper. That way it's not just solder. And I'm going to coat the PCB in what I usually coat all of my high voltage PCBs in, it's conformal coating. So the conformal coating basically will act as a protective layer on top of the PCB. So in case any solder does break off in the future, or let's say a stray piece of copper from a wire gets into the amp somehow, it will not create a short circuit because that conformal coating is a layer that goes on top of all of the PCB components and it protects them from basically uh, conductivity. So it won't, won't act as a conductor. So apologies everybody. Um, I think I found the problem why I wasn't able to actually run the car at the show. And this is something I should have done. I didn't think of doing you know, the first time you run an amp and there's a ton of vibration. I should have expected this to, to have been an issue. So thanks for sticking with me. I'm very happy I, I found what I think is, is the core of the problem. And I'm going to throw everything back together and see if I could get it playing again.